And we're going to tail off the back of that session, which you're talking about education into the next panel, which is the programmatic opportunity for CTV, which ties in nicely to a new guide that was released today uh, by IB Europe's guide, uh, which is called IB Europe's guide to the CTV opportunity in Europe. The newly released guide was developed by experts from our programmatic training committee and provides a European level overview of uh, the CTV programmatic supply chain covering some of the topics that was highlighted by our last panel. And you can download the guide from IB Europe's website, which I believe the link has just been shared in the chat box. So go take a look. But back to panel two. Thinking closely to the topics discussed in this guide, this panel will look at the CTV programmatic supply chain and the programmatic buying options currently available to advertisers. This will be uh, moderated by Jaden Grant, EMEA Client Services at iPhone Web. Welcome, Jaden, and uh, please do take it away. Hello, hello. Hopefully, everybody can hear me and see me okay. You can all hear me and see me okay, right? <laughs> all right. Hello, everybody. My name is Jaden Grant, and as mentioned, I work on the CS side of EMEA at Programmatic Powerhouse. IP on web, so I'm working from both the kind of publisher solution side of things, but also within our um, advanced TV uh, side as well. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome what is for sure a stellar panel uh, here to talk to you today about the programmatic opportunity. So joining me, we have Mia Sari, who's a solution consultant at Xander. We have Stefan Beckman, commercial lead Northern Europe at Freewheel. Gregor Fellner, Director of Business Development at Rakuten Advertising, and Jens Poppelman, Co-Managing Director at DeForce. So yeah, as was alluded to in the previous session, there was a mention of, of programmatic, and this panel specifically will cover that topic. I'm aware there's quite a lot of people here from the ad tech side of things, so I know there's many questions that we're all asking each other around this particular opportunity for programmatic in our industry, along with the challenges and looking also at the end to the future. As was mentioned previously, there's going to be time for Q&A at the end. Uh, so we do encourage you to pop in your questions in the chat and I'll come to them and we'll get our panelists to cover as well. There will also be an audience poll halfway through, so uh, please keep an eye out for that as well. And we'll, uh, I look forward to seeing the results of that. So without further ado, just to kick off, I think let's start. I'm going to start with uh, Stefan. What is the status of CTV in Europe, uh, according to you? And how does it compare to uh, North America and what you're seeing? Yeah, we already saw from Daniel's presentation <clears throat> in the beginning that the consumption is uh, really growing here in Europe and in the different markets, a similar pace as well. But comparing to the US, it's certainly still at a relatively early stage. And especially the AWOT part is at a particularly early stage. So we do see a very high consumption, of course, in the SWOT space and also in the BWOT space. But in a recent survey we did at Freewheel, we also saw that there is a high appetite and interest within the user, within the viewership in AWOT services, and actually also a willingness to even replace one of their Aswad subscription with art, with, with viewers spending more time on, on these type of uh, services. We um, also have the fact that advertising on a large screen is far more effective than it would be on a smaller device. Of course, for advertisers, this is a very interesting opportunity and a very interesting space they're going into. And with the, the AWOD space being particularly interesting for a programmatic buying transaction, it's an automatic development that the programmatic opportunity actually grows. But when you compare it to the US, where you have 38% of viewing time now on streaming services, we are still, of course, in a completely different uh, era. And you cannot always compare European markets with the US market and the way TV is distributed in the US, the way broadcasters are fragmented. is very different and will probably always stay different to some extent. But overall, the development we are seeing beginning in the consumption, beginning with consumption, up to the um, interest of advertisers is showing us a very positive trend for the future here in, in Europe. All right, thank you very much, Seth. And I guess it's almost like you need to isolate Europe from the North America market and kind of compare it in that, not compare it in that way as well. I think it's important to mention as well, we heard quite a few uh, acronyms in there. And for anyone who's joining us who these acronyms like AVOD, SVOD, et cetera, might be new. I know the IAB uh, just before Christmas did release uh, IAB Guide to Connected TV. So if you want to, Translation of those acronyms, uh, you can find them in there. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan. Jens, I'm going to come over to you next. And moving, to, 
more towards the, the technical aspect of uh, connected TV. I guess a lot of people might be saying to themselves, you know, what actually is the, the difference from a technical side when it comes to connected TV versus what we all traditionally know would, uh, would know as programmatic. So if you could give us a version of the technical end of, of the yeah. connected TV. Yeah. Actually, uh, the answer is it's a different complexity you have to deal with. For example, there are not just technical, technically differences, not just between CTV and display or video, but also between CTV, ATV and dynamic ad insertion that we are going to work with in our live streams. We have our platform, we have our TV now platform within this platform, we have live streams and uh, these live streams are the linear TV signal. And actually there are still ad breaks in there, which we are not able to sell with, with a, a normal ad server methods. So we are doing their DIE dynamic ad insertion to get or to sell this inventory as well. And that is what I'm talking about. It's very, it's not very easy to have a unified ID between CTV, video, DIE traffic, and for example, ATV traffic. How can you combine it and make it less complex for customers to, to book it? And what is important for customers? For customers, it's more important to get reach and context. They do not care whether it's ATV, CTV, or DIE, or whatever. You mentioned it before in the panel, it needs to be brand safe. Yeah. For EdTech, we should be able to combine this reach whenever it runs on the big screen or it feels like television. Yeah, of course, you can watch TV now, you can watch uh, the linear signal on a, on a desktop and it feels like television. So there needs to be a flexibility to say, okay, this is something like a big screen reach. And we need to build up a cross device bridge for these channels and try to combine them to a big screen reach. And what we need to do, and this is really a challenge, is to hide the complexity of these uh, in our systems of these, whether it's ATV, DIE, or CTV, or video, and make it bookable and understandable in a much easier way for our customers. And actually, that is uh, something like the subject or one of the main subjects of the DeForce initiative, which is the combination of the big broadcasters in the German market, Pro7 and Mediengruppe RTL. Absolutely. Thank you, Jans. Yeah, I guess it's, try yeah, it's that kind of comes in with the learning piece and just trying to make it easier and easier to understand and easier for like have less of a barrier to entry for programmatic buying across the ecosystem. And actually, Stefan, I'm going to com come back to you looking more at the, the su supply end of things when it comes to programmatic CTV. What's, what, what are we seeing and what are, what are the differences as well? When you come from a traditional digital video world where pre-roll was a predominant, probably only only placement comparable to what we have now in a CTV environment, you have a higher variety of placements. So you're looking at delayed pre-rolls, you're looking at smaller ad pods or even long form full ad pods, which um, is overall a much more TV like advertising experience or probably not even a TV like it is a TV advertising experience. So there's certainly that difference of also the content, it's long form content, it's high quality content, and there are different KPIs and maybe to no surprise of everyone in our round, there are no cookies uh, in a TV or on a TV, but that also leads to a different way of measuring and also a different way how to evaluate your, your campaign in a CTV environment. Those are certainly some of the relevant points and a hot topic, of course, currently, and especially a European topic is content management, where there aren't yet really fully available solutions for a proper content management on a TV device. Thank you very much, Stefan. I know you mentioned kind of measurement and something we're, we're going to touch on uh, in a little bit. So thank you very much. I'm going to come to me over at Xander. So we looked a little bit at kind of the technical side, we looked a bit at the kind of the supply, how it differs from what, from standard programmatic formats, but looking more kind of to the buy, buy end of things. What, how typically is a connected TV bought and sold? Thanks, Jaden. So yeah, I always recommend that buyers work uh, very closely with trusted suppliers uh, because CTV inventory is currently harder to find compared to the regular video inventory. So this can be done either through the regular private market deals or the buyers can also access programmatic guaranteed if they want to purchase a large supply of CTV inventory that is not available on the open RTB or they can also access CTV inventory uh, through curated deals or multi-seller deals. And this is also to uh, get the best impact for the campaigns, right? So uh, not only uh, in terms of scale, but also about the quality of the inventory. 
And I think on top of that, uh, a lot of suppliers and also uh, curators, they also have access to identity signals from viewers. So for example, IP locations, day parting, time of day, or even the context of the program. So they can combine this targeting with the city inventory so that as buyers, they can target more efficiently with the right context to the right audience. Thank you very much. And in terms of kind of clients that you work with at Xander, is, is there any particular type of clients that you're seeing have, have the most success in connected TV or do you see there's a variance just from what you're seeing at Xander? Yes, uh, so I've already talked uh, earlier about working very closely with trusted suppliers. Yeah. And on top of that, I think uh, a lot of buyers, they also need to pay attention to a few key considerations that are specific to CTV in order to make the most out of their CTV campaign. So for example, frequency capping. Yes, it is available on CTV inventory based on device IFA or identifiers for advertisers. However, in Europe, for example, there is a lower level of uh, inventory available with device IFA. So I always recommend uh, my clients to use a less restrictive frequency strategy on this. And of course, with the latest development of machine le learning, uh, soon we will be able to leverage predictive frequency capping so that uh, we don't need uh, personal identifiers in order to set frequency cap on this. So that can also solve the issue. And the other consideration, I think the buyers need to know that they cannot uh, treat CTV like any other devices in programmatic ecosystem like laptop or mobile. So CTV is not a one-to-one -one audience relationship. It is one to household. So the buyers will need to adjust their strategy based on that. So those are just some of the examples of key considerations that buyers need to pay attention to to make a successful campaign. Thank you so much, me. I'm sure everyone listening will agree. Those are some really good practical examples of how um, users can buy uh, programmatically for CTV. Um, so I'm going to come on next to a little bit of research um, that was done recently. So programmatic advertising research was done by IAB and, and the results said that CTV is the main area of growth with 70% of advertisers and 61% of agencies stating that connected TV will be one of the key programmatic growth areas over the next 12 months, over the next year. With that being said, of course, it's not gonna come without its challenges. We all know in this industry working, you've got opportunities and challenges and that's completely normal. I think there is actually gonna be a poll that might pop up on your screens in a second. So keep an eye on it. But yeah, while we wait to see if the poll comes up, I, I wanna to come to, over to Greg. Oh, here we go. So yeah, what is the biggest barrier to enable programmatic connected TV advertising scale in Europe? So if you just select, Okay, I'll keep an eye out for those uh, results. So I just, before we look at them, yeah, going over to, to Gregor, from your perspective, what are the, the key challenges you guys are seeing? Yeah, Jane, so uh, the mentioned piece of research uh, is great. It holds uh, promising results. I think that the advertisers uh, realize that there is a shift and that these findings correspond also quite nicely with what we've seen from our research, able to the time is now, uh, last year when the pandemic start, started, it has analyzed the other side, the audiences, and uh, their watching behavior. And during the pandemic and after, afterwards, hopefully soon. And as uh, Stefan mentioned, although TVOD and SVOD is big, AVOD is on the rise. The majority uh, would use ad-financed streaming models, even uh, far beyond you know, the pandemic and the current situation. They're you know, tired of having another uh, SVOD service. And um, this is also true for all age groups. So not only the younger, but also the older ones who maybe use for the first time an ABOT or OTT service will stay uh, with it because of the nice and comfortable functionalities. So this, this is great. And uh, there is a, this rule of thumb, you should be where the eyeballs are and uh, the advertisers have realized this, but there are challenges as uh, we heard uh, a couple of times. And so the advertisers need to understand the targeting capabilities. We heard about the targeting capabilities and there are also the limitations of currency that planners are used to from the TV. So as of now, it's hard to measure a net reach, but with the developments and the initiatives the IAB has launched, I think we were getting there at one point of time. And as uh, Jens said, it's not about to wait until everything is uh, full fledged and, and ready. You should start and make it keep it simple. I think we have enough data from contextual signals, but also from technical signals 
to have to reach this audience. So make it simple and not over complex. And it should be understandable and bookable. So the robust contextual targeting mechanism on trusted brands is such a really uh, easy way to reach the, the audience on uh, brands like Bakun TV and others. And also going closely or working closely with OTT players who also work closely with the OEMs. So the smart TV uh, manufacturers also gives a, a, a level of trust because I think the Samsung of the world wouldn't work with apps that are not brand safe and are not uh, delivering high quality content to the audiences. So there is an easy way to access the audiences already. And I hope that uh, the research will turn into real figures uh, in the near future. Thank you very much, Gregor. And I see we have the results in of the poll. So 50% said measurement. So sorry, the question again was, what is the biggest barrier to enabling programmatic uh, CTV advertising to scale in Europe? So 50% we saw measurements. We saw 38% was market fragmentation. And I think that is uh, particularly true within uh, the European market, as we're all aware. 4% said ad fraud, 3% uh, said brand safety. So I, I so no, no huge surprises there. I think it's all pretty aligned with what we think. But I guess looking at those uh, results, Stefan, anything, any comments or anything you want to add regarding those results uh, from your end? I, I got the survey and as a panelist, I wasn't able to participate, but actually I would have uh, chosen from those options uh, also measurement. And in addition to that, from a buyer perspective, especially there's still a lack of scale for CTV inventory in the European market. And Combined with that, um, and to the point Jens made earlier, um, there's still a challenge in the buying strategy where you, where it's hard to combine uh, your TV buying uh, um, strategies with CTV buying strategies linked to the lack of scale and the not yet really perfectly existing measurement part. Thank you very much, Stefan. So speaking of, you know, God, I spoke about a guide earlier on, and you also mentioned about research being done. Um, IB Europe have also just released a guide on the programmatic CP CTV opportunities in Europe, it's looking at the targeting methods specifically available to programmatic CP CTV. So speaking specifically on those targeting methods, like what typical targeting methods are available uh, and what would you recommend to partners? Is there a specific room you think is, is available for partners with targeting related to connected TV? And I'm going to come over to Gregor on that one. So first, of course, I recommend to download the guide because there's everything laid out in, in really uh, uh, you know, great detail. But generally speaking, we talked about contextual targeting uh, capabilities available and technical targeting like day of time, geo and frequency. Uh, let me first put the contextual targeting capabilities in perspective. This is sounds maybe not so cool like third-party data in the, in the past, but it's based on first-party data. We know our audiences in all the, um, the OTT apps that are out there, or the broadcasters know their audiences. Uh, there's a, a good piece of research, and they can package based on this research contextual targeting. And, and the context your brand is appearing is, is a great context. It's long form, it's, uh, it's brand safe and uh, less user generated content. So I think it's, it's already a lot available. And with the measurement piece that we just uh, saw in the poll, of course, we, we would like, because we are all digital, we would like to measure everything ourselves as an advertiser and see it in our dashboard. There are some things already available. So you can have a great CPCV, you can see the view for rate and even third-party measurement partners are now measuring uh, viewability. Although you can't scroll on the TV set, it's full screen, but still we are working on it to give this, let's say, commodity from other digital placement also to, to the buyers. So we, we have nothing to hide. It's the opposite. We want to be full transparent and proud of what we do. So I think yeah, just a, another reference to the guide, everything is there, what you need. Thank you very much, Gregor. And you mentioned measurement, and I know measurement has come up in, in the poll as well. Now, there is going to be a panel specifically relating to measurement later, but I think it would be remiss of us not to talk about it in the programmatic context as well. And before we do, just to remind everybody, there is another 10 minutes left, and we will leave time at the end for questions. So don't be shy. Here's your opportunity to, to get the expert uh, advice on any questions you might have. So yeah, please do uh, submit ones um, if you'd like to. So, yeah, speaking of measurements, and in the context of programmatic stuff, and you already 
uh, Gregor, so you already briefly mentioned about it, but Mia, from your perspective, what, what needs to be done from the measurement side of things within CTV? So on the buy sites, uh, because there's a lack of standardization, as mentioned earlier, and there's also no cookie. So the CTV metric measurement is undeniably more limited than a regular video advertising. That's why when it comes to tracking or measuring performance-based KPI, I think we need to move away from the hard performance-based KPI like conversion or CPA. And we need to uh, try to leverage more on the attribution-based KPI like conversion uplift or uh, offline sales attributions. And this is this has become increasingly important, not only for CTV, right, but for also all other programmatic campaigns because of the death of third-party cookies. That's why we need to try to leverage more on attribution-based KPI. And on the other side, uh, for uh, branding campaigns, for example, there is still a lot of data available for CTV. So buyers can always leverage metrics like unique reach, completion rate, and com- Uh, cost per completed views in order to measure their their efficiency of the campaigns. And they can also use the TV metrics like GRP, gross rating points, to measure the reach that they can can target from their CTV campaigns. Thank you very much, Mia. Yeah, we got related to GRP, which I guess is the traditional measurement uh, of linear TV and how you translate those into programmatic digital KPIs as well. But it is, it is possible, it's the main thing. And actually, I even see with some clients I work with at IP on web, like we've come up with calculations of formulas that relate to GRP, but they are translated into the digital, digital language. Okay, thank you very much, Mia. Jens. I haven't heard from you in a little bit, but I'm going to come over to you just to give your input on the kind of measurements of the things. What's your, what do you think needs to be done here? Yeah, I think your poll was really perfect. And it's a question of how to get rid of fragmentation and how to get the measurement in there after you have get rid of the fragmentation. And actually, I see that in the German market because it's a much easier market. Let me put it like this. You have ProSieben, you have Mediengruppe RTL, and if both are talking to each other, then you already have less fragmentation. And this is really helpful. Nevertheless, we have a solution when it's about CTV, when it's about Mediengruppe RTL inventory and ProSieben inventory, but we still do not have a solution for the other inventory in the German market, though we are in constant talks with the guys and to find a solution so that we can combine all the CTV that there is in the German market with a unified ID. Again, it's always a question of these IDs, whether it's cookie based or whatever, we need uh, steady and unified IDs. So there is really a need for independent and ad verification and measurement afterwards. Nevertheless, usual vendors often have answers for CTV as this is already a common sense. There are already ideas, you have to talk with them and um, actually you can find a solution. But as mentioned, we are not just talking about CTV, we are talking about ATV, video, the combination of everything. And to find somebody who is who, uh, of, the, of these vendors who really has a solution that combine all this There is no one. For example, when you talk to them about ATV, they constantly say, okay, in ATV, uh, in CTV, we are doing it this way. But that was not the question. Our question was, how do you do it in ATV? And how do we find, after we know how you do it in ATV, we can think about how can we combine an answer for CTV, ATV, and video. And actually often, we do not even receive any replies by vendors for these questions. So it's not that easy to find Maybe it's too early, that might be, maybe it's too fresh, but there is still a challenge for the next two or three years to get all this to a big screen at verification measurement. Thank you very much, Jens. Um, And I'm about to come on to my last uh, question. And before I do, I mean, look, we've heard, it's clear there is opportunity for programmatic and connected TV. I don't think, as we all know, programmatic's not really going to go anywhere. It's only going to keep going and, and drive drive us forward. I mean, obviously, but with that, there is going to be some challenges as well. But again, it's, it's nothing that we haven't really uh, seen you know, before and nothing that we can't uh, overcome as, a, as an industry. So the last question that I, I wanted to ask before I, there's a couple of audience questions in here as well, if we've got time. According to, and I'm going to ask each panelist this, for, for you, what is the future of programmatic connected TV? I am going to go to Gregor first. The future, I think, in the future, uh, programmatic CTV uh, will be the honeypot in the middle. So programmatic CTV will be the center of all video and TV activations, Jens, and uh, of course also some other channels, as long as the smart TV is the biggest screen in each and every household, where the users will gather around this honeypot. 
going forward. So therefore, the advertisers will be also there and uh, the shift will from traditional TV to CTV will be uh, seamlessly, but also fast. Thank you, Gregor. And, and Mia, from your side over in Shay Zander, what, what do you guys think is uh, the future of connected TV? How, how important is it for, for Zander at the moment? I can second what Gregor said, uh, the future of CTV will definitely be honeypot. Uh, as a trader, I'm very excited of the future of CTV. We've been talking about CTV for a long time and finally we're seeing more and more activities. And I think we are in a very good positions that we work very closely, not only with buyers, but also with sellers in order to make the most out of these opportunities. And I know there is still a lot of work to be done of course, to standardize measurements and privacy regulations around CTV inventory. That's why in the future, and starting from now, actually, we are already relying more and more on organizations like IAB in order to find the best solutions uh, for this problem. And yeah, we, are, we want to make sure that well, we, will be very, we will be working very closely on that, and I'm excited for it. Great to see the, the excitement there, Mia, coming from Xander. I think, uh, yeah. Yeah. What about you guys? What For you, what is the future of programmatic uh, connected TV? Actually, the future is very bright. Whether you call it honeypot or whatever, it's a success story. We see it on our side, whether it's CTV or ATV, that the programmatic way, there's, there, there's really a high demand for this inventory. And we have been talking about that already. Why? Because it's really brand safe. It's television. It's viewable. Everything that a customer wants, it's there. Mm -hmm. Actually, therefore, our job is, and it's, it's a bright future, and we need to take care that we further improve the way you can book and combine TV reach, whether it's CTV, ATV, or DIE traffic. Thank you, Jens. And last but not least, over to Stefan at Freewell. For, for Free, what is what does the future of uh, connected TV look like? We have been working with broadcasters since many years. And for us, where we are right now is just a natural development of something that has already started in the last years. And, you know, we've been mentioning and discussing quite a few challenges in the industry, but at the same time, I think we have overcome already quite a few. There is actually a way to buy in a standardized fashion a CTV already. So the pipelines are there. Publishers have chosen their platforms uh, with which they make their inventory um, available in a, a programmatic fashion. I think we shouldn't always look only at the challenges, but look um, at what we already have. And what we already have is something that is also continuously growing. So of course, again, I can't find a better word than a honeypot, I would agree with all the others here that the future is bright. Yeah, absolutely. I'm definitely going to steal that word, honeypot, when, uh, when referring to connected TV now. It's a nice Very sweet. Event. Thank you. Very, oh, oh, <laughs> I see what you did there. All right, guys, we just have enough time to answer uh, one audience question that's come through. So this is coming from Oliver Friedrich. And they have said, what is the role of open auction on connected TV? PMPs become less relevant as on display with more maturity in place of signals and measurement. So I'm going to come over to actually go at uh, Rakuten if you want to answer that one for us. Yeah, just a quick one on this. Uh, I think, of course, this is uh, the evolution and we wouldn't speak about uh, open auction when we uh, wouldn't speak about programmatic. That's uh, both belong together. However, I think this is a long way down the road. First, we have to overcome challenges with consent on a TV set, harmonizing all these different platforms and channels. And uh, then I think the measurement bit will be, it will be easier done uh, once we, we did that. But still then we have some habits, some buyer habits. And I would just mention the programmatic forward market. TV buyers are used to buy in advance and we are all human. Although we believe in technology and the signals, we still have buying um, uh, habits and, and routines, especially in Germany. And I think it would, would take really time if both will be overlapping. And I don't see it next year and even not the year after, but one day will come now the shiny object. A shiny object, I like that. Thank you very much, Gregor. And there was another, one other question regarding, did the panel think that there's a current skills gap in Europe for buyers? And I actually think we covered a little bit in, in the previous talk about this education piece for CTV. The reason why we're doing events like this is exactly for that. All the guys that were mentioned during uh, this panel as well are available as well for that. There, there is a bit of a and a gap but it's all about us learning through these events and gaining the skills as we go on we're all, we're all in the same boat we're all steaming ahead to the honey pot as, as we're now calling it so yeah 
again, the future is looking indeed bright for programmatic in Europe. And I've got one minute to spare, so all that's left for me to do now is say thank you very much to our wonderful uh, panelists for joining me today. Everybody will agree. Um, I'm sure everybody has taken away some learnings on this and we look forward to, to seeing you all on the honey boat. <laughs> Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, all, uh, Jaden, and thank you for the pa fascinating panel discussion, all for sharing your insights into the programmatic opportunity for CTV, something we're hoping and expecting to grow in the near future.